Mahe League Week 1, Game 2. We are currently 0-1 in Mahe League, and we're going up against Young Kiv. He's getting the ball for us right here, boys. Now, Young Kiv, obviously, uh, one of the best man players of all time. Numerous time belt winner, couple hundred K in earnings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, Mahe League is two games a week for six weeks. Again, this is Game 2. Um, my division, this is an out-of-division game. My division is me, K-Mac, Dez, and Astro. So, obviously, a really good division. And to get any sort of leg up, we need to win, like a better word, as simple as possible as we can make this. We need to win as many games as possible. So this out-of-conference out of game against Kiv is uh, going to be a big, big, big deal for us. Now, I'm in the multiple defensive playbook. That's going to give me 3-4 odd, and it's going to give me dollar. Dollar is the main thing I run by. I found some pretty cute things on 3-4 odd. On offense, we're in the Green Bay Packers for me, or, uh, playbook. But I like some stuff on 3-4 odd, and you'll see me run that throughout. Now, in Dollar, though, which is pretty much my base formation, you'll see me run a lot of DB Fire. I get asked all the time, why do you guys see me flip DB Fire before I call it? It's just a habit. Like, literally, there's, I am not aware of any blitz advantage it gives you at all. It is a habit from years ago. I did it a lot last year if you watch those videos. And first play, we're going to be coming out in DB Fire, sitting in cover two. And you see me move both these safeties down to help get them in the box. And Kiv just, Kiv just throws a Stevie. Um, this is one of those things that like legitimately I came and sit here and be like great defense. Um, he just threw, he ran the play double post from Eagles playbook through the tight end late slash early pretty much through the tight end and the only spot where you really couldn't throw the tight end and end up being a pick. It would have been really ideal for this to be a pick six, but it wasn't. Um, again, I, the, the biggest takeaway that you could take from, uh, uh, that you can learn from something like that is that the best man players in the world make such stupid mistakes, myself included. I'm very much in there. We make such dumb mistakes. So a big lesson that you can get, and I, I really preach a lot in these videos and on civil.gg and all that stuff is like, dude, you need to make your opponent beat you because typically they will beat themselves before they even have a chance at beating you. And the best, best example I can give for that is that right there. You can also see in all the gameplays on this channel, man, consistently, you will see dudes just throw the ball right at me eventually. So if you can just do a couple of things on defense, which is take away kind of some of the short stuff, take away especially the deep stuff, right? Don't give them any kind of easy one-play touchdowns, easy, you know, whatever they're trying to do, and get them to throw some of the stuff they're a little bit more uncomfortable with. Man, they'll throw you picks, dude. But first and 10 from the 10, we're immediately going to a pass play here, and I'm looking to get this smart route and out route to, uh, to MVS on the right side. And he actually, I remember this play, he, he kind of he upsets me with what he does here. Smart route out route. He runs all the way to the back across, runs, boom, then die. like, look, look, look. This should have been an easy, easy, easy. He's done a smart route out route. So, boom, and he's open right here for the touchdown. Okay. That is what this route is. And you can see it in my player if I show it here again. Yeah, I don't. But you see, that is an out route. He bounces off the back of the end zone. And then instead of just catching the ball, he decides to dive so he doesn't get his feet in bounds. And he touched out of bounds before he. Just, that, whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. This game this year is really bad with uh, people in the end zone just not running the routes correctly. It's very frustrating to see constantly. And it's, uh, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Um, nonetheless, you guys guess uh, Lexus is getting some free advertising off this video because we're in the MCS Man Bowl Stadium. We're going to go back to another very similar play. This time we're looking for an out route to Bo Jackson potentially. Let's see what happens right here if we're able to hit it or not. We would have scored seven. I mean, three is cool, but seven it would be such a big deal here, obviously. Seven would be such a big deal. So we're going to sit here, going to roll out, looking for A, not able to get. We're going to take off a of Bo Jackson and get all the way down to about the one. One of the big advantages, dude. And this goes for a lot of you guys who play CFM and regs, right? Because at this point in the year, you can get a fast quarterback pretty easily. But if you can get a quarterback some speed, dude, he adds another layer to whatever offense you're running, right? You might be a huge pocket passer. But just by adding that speed element, you are going to be able to take plays that are bagged, plays that are broken, plays that you are under pressure, and at the very least, be able to make them just, you know, neutral plays, but at times, be able to make them into something huge like we did right there, a nine-yard gain, which sets us up for a third and goal from the one. Boom, we're able to fight. I, I mean, I got lucky with that. I think I got unlucky with the first play um, where my dude bounced around the back of the end zone right here, and this is insane, right? Marshawn Lynch fights, should have go down right there, fights, 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 eventually fights into the end zone, which is crazy. I would have went for it, I believe. I would have had a fourth and inches from the, or a fourth and one from the one, right? Fourth and goal from the one. So I would have went for it. I was an aggressive ball carrier right there. So you saw me change my coaching adjustments to get off of that. Now, I mean, 
We're just going to play defense, I guess, right? But yeah, just an odd start to the game. And you see right there, we get a little bit of delayed pressure. But Kiv is, he's just kind of missing throws. I don't really know. Like, right there, he, that wouldn't have been completed had he thrown it because we would have had a KO knock that ball out. But this is a little weird. A little weird. He missed that read early. We are calling this play, this free safety zone blitz. But instead of the usual setup where you'll have your D-line pinched, uh, instead we're going to keep these guys out in contains and look to get double A-gap slash B-gap pressure from these two dudes right here. I really do like this blitz. It, it, it does a pretty good job across the board. And you can kind of see what that setup looks like right there. On the back end, though, you do, need, you do need to adjust the coverage a little bit. And you see Kiv showing me his hand a little bit early, uh, which is going to come back into play later where he hits me quickly up the seam with this streak from this uh, slot wide receiver. Well, it's an outside wide receiver, but he has a slot and bunch X nasty. Rolls out to the right side. Throws the corner out. That's one of the best ways to attack the style of defense, dude. These on the run throws, I mean... It, they're just really good. If you can start learning how to blue pass them, you can use roaming. That's what I use. It helps me out a lot. It is 2AP, but I think you can definitely afford it. Yeah. Just the rollout stuff is tough. But you see, again, that blitz is so good because right there, I mean, this is an incredibly hard throw. And this, I get incredibly lucky. Now, this was a conscious de decision I made the other day, actually, where you, if you notice my defensive ends, let's back up a little bit more. My defense ends here are Leo Chan, Chanel, whatever that dude is, and Bo Jackson. The reason for it being them, as we watch this play again, my fault, uh, but the reason for it being those two dudes is that they both get Lurk Artist, which means they'll catch the line picks. I hate this being the game, but it is a huge deal because in this situation where, you know, we send, oh, whoops, let me actually fast forward slightly more, my fault, uh, where we send a blitz at him. I kind of rewinded too far right there. My apologies. We're going to send a blitz at him, though. He gets his, he throws, ball gets popped up, we're able to get a D-line pick, and we're able to very quickly take a big-time lead because Bo Jackson's faster than everybody on the field. He's going to get six out of it. And just like that, we're up in a minute and a half, we're up 14 nothing without really playing any offense so far. And we didn't even get ball. So we get ball at half, we're up 14 nothing, And we're doing good. That blitz, though, coming up big early, forced him out of the pocket to his weak hand. He tries throwing it off his weak hand side, which is going to be kind of a bad animation. The speed at the end and the speed at my blitzer is able to hit him. And then alert guard is my DN able to get the pick. That's why, you know, a lot of people go for pass rush moves and stuff on your defensive end. But instead, I really do think there's something for specific defenses to be said for guys with pick artists or guys with lurk artists rather in this game, right? So just something to keep in mind uh, because anybody else, you know, if I chase Young there, that would not have been a pick. And you see right there, pressure able to get in, but that is Kiv dotting us to play double post. And, I mean, I can't expect to really consistently just get stop after stop on him, obviously. You know, the first, the first one was just a really bad read. The second one was fluky. I was able to get a D-line pick. And you see, though, the blitz again. And right there almost is almost a D-line pick because that is a lurk artist almost getting the ball. That's the value in them. Do I hate it for the game. And I know I, I get argued with that all the time where people are like, oh, it's good for the game, D-line picks, whatever. I hate it. But you can see the pressure. It's just hard to make a living doing that consistently, right? And there's going to be D-line picks that come as a result of that. So it's like, it's tough, dude. It's tough. It's one of the reasons why I started running this defense like this, because I know it can produce D-line picks, which, again, I hate, but are really good in the game. And it's something you got to use to your advantage. Right there, we are able to force an under pressure, which, thinking about it more, maybe I should, maybe I should put under, an under pressure guy right there to force more under pressures. I don't know. Just food for thought, I guess. Huh. Interesting. 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 We're coming out now in the double safety blitz, getting our safeties into the box, but we're going to go with the Mabel cover. So we're actually going full coverage right here for the first time all game. And my user honestly just falls asleep right here. I just didn't come down hard enough on the tight end like I should have. I kind of like baited like I was coming down, but then I got stuck in no man's land. Kind of like really just an idiot. I'm really just an idiot for that. But nonetheless, we're going to go back to the uh, Mabel coverage again right here. Should be pretty good defense. And it is. He's going to throw the ball away. Cool. Be able to mix in a really good blitz and then throw in some really good coverage like Mabel, which is essentially, if you don't know what Mabel coverage is, you have a curl flat uh, with your coaching adjustments. Your curl flat is set to about five yards typically, and you have a flat set to about 25 yards. You put them on the same side of the field and you blanket that sideline. And then what you're able to do is you can do that on both sides, aka double Mabel because you're Mabeling two sides. Send the blitz again. This time it's going to get picked up. He's going to go for that, but you just can't really do that. Deep out zone KO. I mean, you can see the alignment pre-snap where, you know, I'm pressed. He's going to be able to get a step on me, but 
you'd have to get a perfect animation for you to actually catch this. Deep out zone KO just does a really good job. You see, he, he does possession catch it, but you just really won't get that very often. And I, yeah, I thought it was kind of a surprising throw just because I felt like he would, he knew that he wouldn't be able to get it. But at this point, you're probably frustrated. Third and 10, I decide to finally check into three, four odd. I'm really just trying to give him a slightly different look right here. Run something that I think can give him some good pressure and be able to get us into a fourth down, right? So we're in three, four odd. We're going to end up sending, I believe, uh, five at him. And this pressure is going to be in his face. I remember this play. The pressure in his face is just about me playing good defense. And what do we do? We don't play good defense. Touchdown. So what did he do right there? Pretty simple. He went verticals from bunch. This outside receiver is on a wheel route. And this guy's in a deep zone. So who's going to defend this flat? This guy? He can't get out there. So he quick throws a wheel. Easy rack for a touchdown. And this is something that kid's been doing for a long time as well. So, you know, does the pressure even come in right? The pressure actually doesn't come in right there. Um, so the pressure was an L as well right there. So overall, just L from the dog. Now he does decide to go for two, which is, uh, some people just like to go for two in this situation, whatever. We're in three, four, I, he decides to snap roll out to the left side. But we get a really nice click on, actually, to Chanel right here. This is one of those lurk artists I was talking about. Watch this. He rolls out left, has Bo Jackson coming across. But we get a click on right here to Chanel, go backside, able to take that away. And that's huge because instead of cutting the lead down to six, where his next touchdown, he could technically take the lead, we are still up eight. We are super in the driver's seat. Super, super, super in the driver's seat. And now we're actually going to play offense for the first time all game. So Packers playbook for us. I'm running a lot of bunch tight end right now, actually. just It's a mix-in with a bunch strong and some trips tight end offset. And immediately, very first play, I'm going for a bomb. Uh, this is probably not the smartest thing to do first play, but we decided to. I actually, man, I'm upset because we have the bomb, but we also had the tight end corner route, which, you know, I'm upset with myself for missing the throw on the bomb. Bo Jackson is kind of bad under pressure. It's something that's very known about him. You can get a strategy card that bumps up his throw under pressure rating some. That you can do and that will help i mean even right there you can kind of see the miss throw so there's that we go durham boom underneath a bo jackson really good route combo here this could be good pretty much every single year boys and it, i mean it's simple all we're looking for halfback streak this guy's on a post route this guy's on a drag this guy's pushing all the zones deep and this guy is attacking the flat and because he's a wheel route he'll actually attack deep late but that's not really the important part and so we're able to flood the left side of the field, but also we can attack the middle of the field really well right here. And that's kind of what we do with A, kind of throw him in the middle flat area. And Bo Jackson, to Bo Jackson, nice connection right there for a gain of 11. And immediately, it's always a good feeling when you're playing somebody, you know, very good at the game and you get off to a nice start. I'm definitely, I've always kind of felt like this in Madden where I'm like more of a, like a rhythm guy, where if I can get into a nice rhythm, I can be really, really good in offense. But if I'm, like, having troubles, you know, just, get, just troubles getting into a rhythm, I, I really, like, ha will have issues, like, seeing the field very well. Um, I'll have troubles freestyling, all that type of stuff. And you see, I'm going right back to that bond that we called earlier. This time, though, it won't be. It actually was there. It was actually there for a touchdown. You just got the pressure in. That's one of the issues with calling will play touchdowns. And I'm probably calling them a little bit too much right now. I'm, you know, it, it's a little bit more of a cocky thing for me in this situation. You know, I'm up so big so early so if I, I could also score a touchdown like that you know one play touchdown it's like i mean that's demoralizing for your opponent but yeah it sends pressure we got double corner routes we're gonna throw it but we cannot complete it a big thing i've added into this offense too and mind you i've done this some this past year but if you're not doing it, i highly recommend you start doing this some is simply audibling around a different formations. It just throws the defense slightly off. They have to adjust to more than one formation now at any given time. And I'm, I'm actually super happy about this read right here. He went kind of crazy on third and 10, making a bunch of different, a bunch of different adjustments. I couldn't even tell you exactly what he did. He cross manned. Let's back this up slightly. So he's in double safety blitz in dollar and then audibling out of it. What that means is that these safeties, this is a safety right here, comes from down here all the way here. And then he backed off his corners too, almost creating a little bit of an inverted look where the corners were behind the safeties. A little bit of a weird defense. He typically will send these guys off the edge and he's really just trying to play mind games and hesitate. And especially on third and 10, that's what he's looking to do. So in this case, he sends that slot corner pressure. We are able to stay composed enough in the pocket and then find the wheel route wide open from the tight end, Bo Jackson, 
which is super, super, super big. That's, I, feel, I felt like when I threw that pass, I was really happy because I felt like it was a throw that I easily could have missed. I'm, again, being a little bit newer to the offense, not being 100% certain of everything I'm seeing and playing just against a really elite defense. I was a little bit concerned, but, or, you know, I was, I was a little bit like, ooh, this is something I could definitely miss. But, yeah, especially with the way the cross man looked. I mean, we were able to do a good job, which I'm happy about. That's a good read right there. Going across, bang, tight end. You can see, like, this is big where anticipation plays a big factor because right here is where he's open, right? But it might not look like that. You know what I mean? Just because there's a guy technically on him, but he's running to open grass. And that's a big thing I try teaching people about passing is that, like, you really want to, like, you need to know the routes that you have on the field. and You need to know the spaces that they're attacking, the parts of the field that they're attacking. And then you got to be able to read open grass. That's such a huge, huge, huge deal. We kick the extra point, go up 15, and there's our first offensive drive, which wasn't, I mean, he got us to a third and 10. We didn't have a full offensive drive, I guess, because I don't even know if we passed the 50 right there. I feel like we scored pretty early on. And a total of 30 points almost has been scored in the first under four minutes of this game, which is kind of funny. But because he's down 15, we're going to be able to keep on sending this blitz at him. He wants to throw the seam quite a bit, I know. So we just got to be a little bit aware of that. He goes double corners to the left side. Our user's there. Good pocket by him. It always sucks when you send heavy pressure at somebody, but they're still able to roll out or they're still able to scramble up the middle. Always kind of frustrating, especially because we are sending interior pressure at him. You know what I mean? He snaps the ball very fast right there. Underneath throw. Tackle him, but still getting up eight or so. And he's going to go hurry up consistently at us now. One, he thinks that gives him the best advantage to keep me from being able to adjust my defense. But two... He is in just a, you know, a little bit of a time crunch. Pressure in his face, able to juke outside of my guy, throws the Texas route to Bo Jackson. And that should take us to the end of the first quarter. Let's see if it does. Yeah, he calls this play. It's going to take us to the end of the first, where we took a very quick lead on Kiv due to some fortunate things our way and due to some just him not making good decisions early. And yeah, we get to take advantage of it. I checked down into 3-4 odd right here. I just want to send some pressure his way, give him a little bit of a different look, especially because I feel like he's kind of moving on the dollar pretty easily. He runs the ball from this, but we're able to get out there with our user. We talked about this in the last game against Gabigol, the last breakdown, where the, his user played an RPO bubble I ran. That's very similar there. He, throws, he runs an RPO wide receiver screen. Right there, false start. But he runs an RPO wide receiver screen, and my user is able to help make that play. So many people just like, your user can essentially be like, the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th player on defense with all the different things he can do. And so many people will take their user and essentially make almost make their defense play with only 10 people because they do nothing with them. Throws that crosser, good dot down to the one. Good laser by him. My pressure is not really coming in as much as I'd like it to. And we might have ourselves into a little bit of a shootout. He's going to go single back wing tight now, though. See that pressure almost getting to him off the edge. Good dot. I don't really have great 3-4 odd run defense, to be honest with you, but he fights in. No, he fought just short of it. Okay. I'm kind of just makeshifting this, to be honest with you guys, and just kind of hoping. I know he's going stretch left, so we're just going to try to shoot stretch left. Almost get it, but he fights in that time. Fair, fair, fair. Remember, he went for two earlier, so in this case, he's actually going to go for two again to cut it to a seven-point lead, but we stopped that. So because he went for two earlier and didn't get it, he goes for two again this time, doesn't get it. And instead, what should probably be a 14-21 game, I actually keep a two-possession lead on, which is very big. Like, that is a very, very, very big deal. So now, not only have I gotten kind of fortunate, he's made some mistakes, but he's also messed up now, or has not capitalized on the two-minute version game, where he's gotten himself into a bigger hole than he needs to be in, given the situation. Because he could easily be down to seven points, get a stop, get a score, be right back into the game. Fortunately for me, though, up nine, four minutes left, we also get ball at half. I should run the ball right here because a run right here takes it down to four minutes after the play. 30 seconds gets it to 3.30, and we're playing a little bit of a clock game. We go RPO, easy. And while an RPO isn't a run, it's a pretty easy completion. We get a little stick work right there, huge gain. I mean, now, things are really going my way just across the board because offense, we have three completions. One of them was that. One of them was, that was a good read to the tight end wheel, but it, was, it turned in from what could have easily just been a 10-yard gain against different defense to a one-play touchdown, basically. Now we're in field goal range, and it's just like, wow. I mean, we're not having to play a ton of Madden right now, truthfully. We've played some defense, 
but we haven't had to play a ton of offense yet. And that's that's a big deal, dude. It really is. You can get to a point where, I mean, you're, you're essentially letting them beat themselves, right? And you're just taking what they give you, making the game super easy on yourself. It's always easier said than done to do that, but when you're able to start getting that going, it's a huge, huge deal. You can see how the clock already is going to drip down to, before we snap this, it should be about 250, give or take. I can't imagine I snap it any sooner than that. And it's going to be read option, I believe. Which second I, oh no, we're not going to call read option. I don't know why I'm, I really should be here. I wonder if we're just trying to, boom. All right, so I actually love that. So we literally just snapped the ball and rolled. Yeah, easy enough. He's been running. So either he's setting the slot corner or he's setting three. We're just able to roll out on this pretty easily. Outrun everybody to the sideline. Boom. That's pretty simple. Not much more to that play or to that situation. I don't love that. I wish we would have ran the ball, but it worked out. And now we should go back to another inside zone. Let's see what we call it. RPO alert bubble from bunch tight end now. Cool. I love this. Snap it. Bang, this should take us to a two-minute warning. We didn't get any yards, unfortunately, on this. But he's not going to call his timeout. So, yeah, that's a two-minute warning. But yeah, a huge thing for us is just, like, don't do anything too stupid where we just let him back into the game. I mean, he really, I mean, he's a first down away from not getting the ball back this half. And we get ball back. You know what I mean? Like, we're in such a great spot. Let's go double corners left side here. Roll out. Got anything. Don't really have anything. So, we're going to slide down. That is something I'm very, very, very proud of myself for doing. It's a little thing. But we just click both right sticks in, so we slide. And because of this, instead of throwing the ball away or you know, getting knocked out of bounds right there, we're able to take one of his timeouts. And he's in a situation where for him to win this game, he, it's not 100% like this yet, but assuming I'm able to put more points on the board throughout this game a little bit, for him to win the game, more likely than not, it's going to come down to a couple of seconds, right? Somewhere along the lines, right? At the final minute, he'll have to win probably. And so we can just limit that, right? Kill as much time as possible. Take away his timeouts. Makes such a big difference. For him to score in this half, it's going to come down to the final seconds, right? That's more so a better, a better analogy or a better example. Third and 12. What do we do here? Might just go Durham. Now we're going to flip into verticals. Okay. I don't think I love this, actually. Now I think more about it. What do I call here? Oh, we go, we go flood to the right, don't we? Yeah, flood concept to the right. Yeah, I just didn't get to block my half back in time. He sent pressure. We couldn't pick it up. Good job by him. Take another time out of his. So not a good offensive possession by me at all outside of just being able to, you know, take some clock of his, which is nice. And we're going to go up a cool 12 points with a minute 50 left. He's going to have a timeout. So kick is up. Kick is good. This is a situation, though, where we can just send pressure, 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 and we just got to see can he pick up the pressure. Can he pick it up or not? Boom, right there. He does pick it up. Although I have mid zone on my user on both my middle linebackers. Mid zone able to activate right there. Knock out a little pivot route in the middle of the field. A little deep zig, basically, that was. I'm curious if I check back into double Mabel at some point here. I don't hate it, but some you see me do, and this is big. This is big, big, big. Early, one of the first plays of the game, he audibled into Bunch X Nasty, and he threw this seam. He just did it on the other side, right? This little seam right here, because this guy's an outside third. So what I do is I hop on this guy really fast and move him in a couple steps. Move him in a couple steps. That's going to take away that seam. But watch what he still does here. He still tries to throw it. KO. Right? And that's a difference between a 15-yard easy just snap gain and a third and 10 here where there's the slight chance that we're able to get another stop potentially. Right? We're going to send that same pressure at him once again. But that's a big deal. Just a little minor adjustment that we're able to do. We're setting a lot of pressure off the left edge here because I think he wants to roll to the left side for double corners. And I'm actually, no, I decide to bluff blitz my left corner. Okay. We're going crazy with the cover three, actually. We're going nuts. I mean, this is basic cover three, but we're just bluff blitzing one of our flats. Send five. No one really gets there. He wants to throw that. He can't. I don't know. Oh, that was just because he tried to throw in double post against a press. Yeah. Big thing I'm doing, even here on 4th and 10, is that we're going to manually press our outside DBs. Just try to take away any kind of corner route, take away any kind of, just really put as much pressure on him as possible. But then you see me back off this slot corner on the left. The reason we're doing this is that Sauce Gardner is in a cloud flat, okay? If he's down here, it's way harder for him to get up to that cloud flat area. Whereas if you back him up, he's going to do a way better job. And because he's in a cloud, well, because it's 4th and 10, we don't want him in this area. 
We want him to be able to get way back here as easily as possible. Because I'm thinking this guy wants to throw corner out, corner out, right? Something like that. Or he wants to throw like a wheel or something, which that cloud flight should do a good job against all of those things. So we'll see what he does. Here's what the play call actually ends up being. But yeah, he goes wheel out there. And he threw this earlier in the game at me, fourth and 10. He threw this earlier where he caught it right here and was able to go up the sideline for a touchdown. Sauce Gardner is now widening out. He actually maybe could throw this. But I think just by moving that guy out there, he reconsiders. And then look what's happening right here. Pressure in his face. Bang. Sack. And he, I don't, I'm surprised he five-outed. But I think it was as simple as moving that slot corner up and out. Made him reconsider throw, the quick throw in that wheel. Then we sent pressure at him. The pressure was really good. Able to get a sack. Just like that, we're up 12. And now the biggest thing, obviously, if we could score a touchdown as time expires, that's huge. Uh, something like that. But for me, I'm like, oh. I should be ending this half up 15, 12, or uh, up, uh, up 15 points. Um, 100%, 100% of the time. Got to get the clock moving early. He's going to burn a timeout of his after this play. Love that for us. Boom. Love it, love it, love it. He calls a timeout. We're probably going to run the ball again right here or some kind of RPO just because I need that clock to go. I need it to go. We're going to go up 15 going into half. We get ball at half. I'm confident I can at the very least get three points out of half. And as simple as that, if you go up 18 points, three possessions in the second half, it, it, it's tough to lose that game, right? It's very, very tough to lose a game that you're up 18 points in the second half, regardless how good the, uh, the, the opposing player is. So second and 12, we do end up going for a pass play right here. End up rolling out with Bo Jackson. But you even see right here, again, I, instead of throwing the ball away, I slide down my quarterback that's going to be double tapping both, or clicking at both right sticks. That's a 30-second difference. I'm so big in this game on making sure I just get rid of all the clock that he can have. Just cannot let him have anything. And even on third down, right, we're going to call a pass play, but I imagine I call a pretty safe play where either I'm going to complete it or he won't get the ball back. And I actually, I fear what I do here because I, I think that's the thinking, and I think it just doesn't execute the way I want it to. Yeah, we take a delay game. That's an L. I'm trying to think of what happens here. I don't remember. The clock's just got to keep going because we can take a play. That play takes three seconds. 30-second runoff gets us down to 15 seconds. Then kick the three. That takes about three seconds. He gets 12 seconds left in half, down 15. So he won't score, right? I think I may, I may just call a bomb play right here to see. Can we get it? Yes, no. If we can, cool. If not, oh well. Curious if that's what we end up doing. Uh, Yeah. Yo, we just call a bomb play. If he blows coverage, awesome. If not, who cares, right? Who cares? And you're going to see exactly when we kick this field goal, 14 seconds. Yep, kick off 11 seconds. Burn more time. He has 11 seconds right here. It doesn't really matter too much. And yeah, halftime, we're up 15. He is onside to start the half. So that is a big opportunity for him. But if we get it, we're already in field goal range to go up three possessions. See what I'm saying? And we're able to get it. Boom. We are in field goal range right now, if not like a yard away. And we're just able to milk a little bit of clock. And I hate thinking of this this early. Maybe, you know, there's an argument to don't worry about that. Just if you score seven, you're in a golden uh, situation. But to me, I'm like, dude, we can just get a couple first downs, milk more of the clock, kick even just, even just kicking three, go up 18. It's, it's so hard for him to win this game. So hard to win this game in that situation. We're going to go double corners, though, so we will be aggressive on the first play. Boom, we're able to roll outside the pocket, throw the corner out, not going to be there. Second and 10. And that's why I actually hate. I hate that. Second and 10 here. We're going to go back to the bunch tight end. I'm going to pass the ball again, actually. Especially after, after I passed on first down, I'm pretty much committed to passing. Pick up this next first down. Drop back what we got. He plays good defense. I don't love the route combo as much as I wish I did. So we're just going to look, look, look. And I get super lucky. This is just the dumbest throw ever. I tried to lose. I literally tried to give him the ball back. I have no idea why I did this. In my mind... Look, look, Y sits. Y is sitting right here. So I'm like, I can, I can highball Y. His user can't get there. That's all I'm thinking. Look, the DBs are back here. His user's here. I can highball Y. I can catch it. In my mind, that's as simple as that. What happens, though? The ball gets led way upfield. We throw a dot. Yeah, I mean, super lucky, obviously. Super, super, super lucky. We go up. 22, though. I mean, I have not had to play offense at all this game between Luck and between him just per basically just losing the game on his own. We have not had to play a single snap of offense, basically. 
almost everything's been spoon fed to us, which, Hey, I mean, great. You know what I mean? But yeah. For, for, for playing the game, like as I feel like smart as I have so far, with really just like, Hey, let, let you lose the game. That was a throw where I tried to lose. And that's what I was saying before, dude, where like everybody, myself included, will make plays throughout a game where like they just try to lose the game, basically. It's one of the reasons why Henry is so good and wins so much because he doesn't throw, he doesn't make plays where he tries to lose. Like literally, simple as that. Watch your games when you're playing. Think about the plays. Think about the, like what you do and see how many times you catch yourself trying to lose the game without even realizing it. I promise it's a bunch. We send pressure again. Boom. I mean, it's screaming at him now and that's him blocking the halfback. That's huge. Everything we can do. We're up 22 points. Everything we can do to keep these drives lasting a long time to get him, you know, milking more clock. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. He goes underneath. He maybe miss. Double miss. Yeah, he gets a lot of rack on that right there. A lot of rack. Only thing going for me is that it's going to be like a 20-second runoff, but still 13-second run. Not even that. But even still, it's like, that is what we cannot be doing, dude. We can't have that. You see me, though, I've gotten really big on just clicking onto players and just moving them around a little bit. I think that's been very helpful. Boom. We're able to get another sack on him. The pressure's just getting him really bad. And I mean, there's nothing worse than Madden than not being able to pick up a blitz. Knowing the blitz is coming, but can't pick it up. He goes underneath to the halfback. Boom. That could have been a fumble. That would have been like a deserved fumble, too. The journal into a hit stick, basically. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Sending a little format. He runs the ball, which was, I thought that was surprising. I think he was just running, really trying to get the first down, but he doesn't get it. We're going to hurry up. Fourth and three. I mean, this is, if we get a stop right here at the game, like that is it right here. Move out. Sauce, just a couple steps. Hard flat. We're going to send four. I don't love this, but I just don't have enough time to get my defense set up. Boom. Good D, good D, good D. He just goes underneath. Good job by him. Good job. Good job. Good read. Yeah. I have a couple crossmans over on the field on the left side here. So in this formation, trips tight and offset. What you'll see a lot of in the red zone is either like an inside zone or you'll see a wide receiver screen or a bubble, right? You guys have all probably seen this quite a bit. So I'm meaning this guy up right here. That should help with the wide receiver screen along with this guy above him. And then my linebackers manned up here. So that'll help with the bubble, right? So we have screen taken care of, bubble taken care of. My user will stop the run. So he's got to pass at the very least. Now, that doesn't mean that he can't dot us, but I want him to at least have to earn the touchdown, right? So we'll see what happens here. He goes underneath again. Boom, nice gain for him, but still clock is, clock is moving. Five seconds runs off. This has been a pretty fast drive for him, and that's what he's just hurrying up, hurrying up, hurrying up, hurrying up, and I can't seem to get a sack or anything, so it's been tough. We're going to send everybody at him right here, rolling around. Boom. Oh. Again, that's why I have Lork Artist there because that becomes a pick six so quickly. So quickly, that's a pick six. Third and goal. We just blow coverage, dude. I actually thought when he audibled to this, it's why off trips. I thought he was going to run an RPO that's inside of this. It's like a tight end little sneak thing. But instead, he just called like four verticals. Good play. Good play, good play, good play, good play, good play. But yeah, I, I, I went all out for the run or an RPO. I didn't think he'd actually call a real pass play. So he cuts the lead down to 16. He is going to go for two, though, which, I mean, you have to go for two at some point. He's going to go for two here, which... If we get a stop here, even though 16 is only two possessions, it obviously feels like a lot more. 16 points is a tough, tough, tough comeback. Let's see what happens. We got a hard fly on the right side. Yeah, he just tries to go quick seam to the right. My hard flat from the linebacker is going to play that. And that's why having hard flats from, or having like flat zones from interior defenders, they'll defend the seams as they work their way out in the seams. So that's just a, a, an advantage of doing that right there from me. And so we're able to get that stop on the two points. So we're up 16. And I'm surprised just the kick deep, dude, or the, the onside. The, the, I mean, the onside gets recovered so well this year, but I mean, you're just giving me great field position. I mean, that one wasn't as crazy, I guess. I mean, I actually got tackled at 35, so it wasn't insane. But still, I don't know. The thought process for me here, though, is, I mean, it remains the same, right? It's just get points. You get points, you win the game. You go up three possessions in the second half, you win the game. There's no way you lose. We go RPO bubble. Bang, it would get somebody to miss. It would get a gain of five. We're, and again, I've scored 34 points. I've only completed six passes, which is insane to think about. It's probably one of the only, I mean, we can do this consistently. We're going to be in a great spot. And we've played good defense, right? We have played good defense. And even the gabble goal game, I thought we played pretty decent defense, right? Obviously, we gave up that touchdown to end the game. But overall, I mean, I feel like I'm very happy with the defense that we've played throughout this. And now I'm trying to make the game even easier on myself. Where I'm like, dude, I'm just going to go for a one-play touchdown and just see. 
Like, can we just snap it? But I, they just don't let me snap the ball. So we take a delayed game, which is like, well, that's what we can't do. Go dagger out a bunch strong right here. Good pot, good pot. Go crosser, bang. Dude, I can't throw this crosser correctly. I think the video actually skips a little bit. I'm happy my pocket presence right here, but dude, I can't throw this. I can't complete this ever. Every time I try to catch it, every time I try to, I always get KO'd by an outside third, which sucks. It's right there. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's three possessions right there. If I catch that ball, I, get, I, kick, I go up 18 points with four minutes left in the fourth. GG's. But now, I'm only up 16 on my own 35, so I got to actually keep it going, right? First down here definitely is definitely going to be a huge thing if we can get it. We're going to double corners right side. A little backside drag and angle. I like this route combo. Pretty decent. He sends a little bit of pressure. We're going to be able to roll out on him. And then, boop. That's the throw. I've made that throw so many times, even just this year. If you guys remember watching my single back wing stack scheme back in probably October or so, same exact. I made that same throw so many times. And you see, he's already using a timeout. So he's already trying to play the clock game. I'm more than willing to just start running the ball. We're on, our, we're on the 38-yard line, so we just can't get pushed back too far. But even that, obviously, first down's huge, but just keep the clock moving, dude, because this should either burn another one of his timeouts or take us to the fourth quarter after this play. So let's see if we go inside zone. Yeah? Snap the ball, Kenny. Snap the ball, Kenny. Take your time, Kenny. Snap the ball, Kenny. Thank you. Boom. We, what, lose a yard or so? But, yeah, it's going to take us to, to the fourth quarter. He's not going to call timeout. And now we're really just in a game of, dude, just, just milk the clock. No reason to do anything cute. No reason to even do, like, juke moves or anything, right? Just milk the clock. No reason. I'm even afraid to throw RPOs unless it's wide open because a pick six changes everything, whereas I'm guaranteed three points right here. I'm guaranteed to go up eight. Or I'm, I'm sorry, three possessions go up uh, 19. Why do anything to risk that? Even passing. Like, I don't think you should ever drop back a pass here unless you're super cool to just – like very, 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 like being aware of taking just taking a sack, right? We go boom right here. See, do I throw the RPO? I do. It's wide open, so we're able to throw it. But if that was contested at all, would never have thrown it. And I'm super cool. Fourth and eleven from thirty nine. We'll kick our three. Now he gets ball back down what thirty seven eighteen down nineteen points. Four minutes left. Point differential is a thing in this mutt league. So there's a chance that we could make or miss playoffs in this mutt league based off point differential. And Madden twenty two. Actually made playoffs in Mutthead League over Decroft by one point in point differential. So this is still very important. And for the sake of he has two timeouts and onside kicks are a thing in this game. Nice. Um, onside kicks are a thing in this game. So I had to very least need this to take a while, right? I need this drive to be a long drive. Do whatever I can to make sure you just can't insta score. You see me bump in the outside corner on the left to take away the seam. Kind of bad defense though by me. Boom. He jukes in, jukes in, dribbles out. Going kind of crazy with the stick. I feel like people stick where it goes crazy as the game goes on. Like when they start getting into tough situations. I feel like that always happens. We switch up the blitz just a little bit here. DB fire instead. Pressure screams off the edge. He tries a quick throw crossword. Can't get it. There is like the slightest argument for him to kick three here to cut it to a two possession lead. But with the two possession lead being 16, I feel like that's a tougher, tougher thing to argue. Boom, takes it up. And yeah. That's always a frustrating one, dude. I, I talk about a lot on, in, in these videos. If you're going to give up something, that the scramble in the middle of the field is something that you are more comfortable giving up because it's tough to do. But give up a 30-yard touchdown scramble, which is, which is tough. It's tough. He's going to go for two here. Down 13. Let's see if we can stop the two-point conversion or not. He goes, boom. He gets it. So he cuts the lead to 11 with two and a half left. He only has two timeouts, but this is still de – like, depending on this onside kick, this is – this is 100% a game. Like, this is certainly certainly something that, that could be winnable for Kiv, right? It'd take a collapse on our end, but it's definitely winnable. We'd get it. Thank God we get the onside, Debo Samuel. And we get enough of a return to where we are in field goal range and a little bit of wiggle room, which is a big deal, too. My biggest thing at this point is just one first down, dude. One first down, one first down. It's why you see me pass, and, dude, I had, in my head, I had such a good pass play called right here. Because one first down, I mean, that's... Inbounds, that's, that's GG's. And, dude, I'm, I'm trying to throw A here because I knew his user was just going to overreact over down in the middle because he was thinking about run or something like that or back out backfield. We have A. Pressure gets me too fast. I like the aggressiveness. I like that we had a good play call, but dang, dude, that could have been bad. And it stops the clock, which is exactly what he needs to go his way. 
But I really do believe like one first down here inbounds, GG's. It's over. So do it again. Now on second and ten, I'm actually gonna run the ball here, which I mean it's a little bit backwards, so keep that in mind. But after that play, because it was a little bit scary with the tip up, I'm like, dude, let's just run the ball. Get it to a two minute warning. Third and seven. First down ends this bad boy. We're gonna audible over to Durham. I like this play call a ton. So he's I'm pretty confident he's sending a lot of pressure at me. So I'm just trying to attack the middle. Trying to attack the middle. Very, very simple. Right? We have double we're gonna have a seam from beast mode, so we can quick throw him potentially. And attack the middle. Boom. He overreacts to the right side. Bo Jackson, drag route, first down. And then we're just gonna milk this game out. Boom. Uh, we're just calling random I form runs. But that that first down's huge. I mean, we can look at his defense again on this. Right? It's pretty basic. He he kind of He's going to send everybody at us. At least that's my thought process. He's going to send everybody. He kind of does. He sends five. This guy bails into a bluff blitz. But because he bails into a bluff blitz, they both defend the same guy here. Drag just running to open ground easily. This, this would have been open too late as well for what it's worth. But yeah. Boom. Good read. We made the reads we needed to make. I mean, I don't think we played bad on offense by any means. It's just he did not make us play offense really at all. Uh, kind of funny to end the game here. We get a D-line pick again, which is great. I mean, we just sent the pressure at him. And he hesitates, misses reads, D-line pick. We kick three to go up to win the game by 17, I think it was, because point differential is important. But yeah, boys, uh, if you guys want this offensive defense, that we're, though you see me running right here against Young Kiv and against all these comp guys, Civil.gg is going to have it soon. We have a bunch of stuff already on there, but this is kind of newer stuff that I'm running, different variations of stuff, so. Civil.gg, code premium will get you 25% off. You can join over 1,000 players who are playing right now, learning the best schemes of Madden. I'm one of the best teachers of Madden. If you've been watching the entire video, I'm hoping you gain some sort of value out of it. I'll see you all in the next one.